So welcome back to part eight of organize and optimize. This video series was telling you how you can organize and optimize your life with creating a system. If you're new here, this is part eight. Part one to seven is linked up here. So go watch those first before you come to this video. Otherwise you're gonna be confused. But just a quick recap. We started with areas and based on those we created our values and based on those we created our goals. From our goals, we created projects and tasks and then integrated our tasks, which tell us what to do into our daily tracker, which tell us when to do them. And then on top of that, we created our knowledge hub or our second brain. And then we connected that to our content output where we can capture stuff, organize it, and then create. Finally, we talked about the weekly review that puts everything together and creates a clean, nice feedback loop for us. But what we want to do in this video is to focus on optimization, to add those little things on top that we actually missed so far. So the first thing that we're going to focus on is resources and archives. Resources are reusable pieces of information, such as a template, such as a checklist. I personally don't use resources that much, but I will tell you where it is actually useful. Archives is like a room where we throw everything in that we don't want to interact with anymore. So all the tasks that we've finished, all the projects that have been finished, all the information that we captured that are not relevant anymore will all be put into archives. But the point of an archives is that we still want to keep that information in our whole system. We don't want to just delete them so that maybe at some point in the future, we can search for those pieces of information and retrieve them and use them again. So I'll show you how that works and integrates with the whole system. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Resources are nothing more than reusable pieces of information and templates that you can use multiple times. This is not the same as the things that you capture in your knowledge hub. The things that are in your knowledge hub are specifically things that you are going to use for your projects, things that you're actively going to learn about, or things that you're actively going to connect to your content tracker to use to create new pieces of information, videos, blogs, and so on and so forth with. Usually these resources only connect to your projects and areas. And that's why if we look at the table, we can only see that they connect to our projects and areas. So let's quickly go over the actual properties because this table is so simple that it doesn't even have a template. All it is is that we can put the specific name of the resource, the type, is it a PDF, is it a screenshot, is it a link, is it a checklist or whatever. We can upload the file that we have for it here or if it's a checklist, we can actually open the page, make our checklist right there, and then connect it to our project, connect it to an area, and there's also the archive button again, if we wanna archive it at any point. We can also always jump to the all resources page and the active resources. So the only difference is that if we archive anything, it will only show up in the all resources page. So just to give you an idea, if we look at the resources that I have, as you see, I don't actually have that many resources. For me, the things that I actually go to reuse over and over again are only very, very niche and specific. So just to show you, for example, the part-time YouTuber Academy course that I took has an initiation blueprint. And this is something that maybe down the line, I want to come back to. So I actually uploaded the file for myself here. And as you can see, I can always jump back to it and see what that file was. And as you can see, it was related to the project of my YouTube and the area of YouTube. And the cool thing is if at any point I jump under, let's say the area of YouTube and open the toggle, I can see that I have these resources also available for me and I can always use them if I need to. I think by now you also know that we can also do the exact same thing with our projects. That's why we used all these self-referential filters and stuff. So I can also always jump to the project and I can see those resources available for me. So I go into my project of learning how to lose weight the right way and exercising. And I can actually come down to the resources and you can see, for example, I have a meal plan here ready for me. And I can also always just look at the PDF. That's about resources. Literally, it's nothing more than that. Next, let's talk about archives, which is actually an interesting part of this whole system. But again, it's super, super simple. So the archives vault is nothing more than a specific view with all the stuff that you've archived, you published, or you finished from your different databases in one specific page so that you can actually see everything at one glance. For example, all of your databases for your content tracker, your library, tasks, projects, goals, values, areas, and resources are all brought in here and they are all actually filtered by the actual archive property 
being ticked, which means being finished. So for example, if you finish a task and the done is ticked, it will also be filtered here. We can actually look at my system to understand this a bit better. And what we can see is that, for example, from the time that I started using this system, I've archived all these different notes, or I've done all these different tasks and I've actually ticked them all off. And the reason I have this archives vault is that I don't want to see these things showing up in my face all the time in my actual system. I want them to all cleanly go away, but I still want to be able to interact with them at any point in time. And for example, if before at some point in my time, I had a project about launching something and I've actually finished it. It is now in my archives. I can always come back to it and see what did I actually do for that project. I can always open it and actually click on project setup just like we actually talked about last time and see all the different notes that I captured for that and all the different areas and goals or anything else that I had for it. For example, I can also see all the videos that I've published at one glance. And this is just a way that you can interact with this. And the other good thing is that you can actually search for all of this at any point in time. So let's say I captured something on May 15th about never giving discounts when doing sales. It's just a YouTube video I captured using my capture layer that we covered already. And let's say down the line at some point, I want to make a video or I actually work on a project that is related to giving sales. Or let's say my friend or my partner comes up to me and be like, hey, should we give a discount for this product? And I'll be like, no, we should never give discounts for our sales. So what I can do is that I can actually search my system and show him that note or show him that video and my notes on it. So I can always click on control P or command P on Mac and actually search. So let's put this count. And as you can see, it will go through all of my system. This will take a bit of time, especially if you have a lot of things. And as you can see, the first thing that it came up with is never discount to get sales. And I can always jump into it. The video is captured on May 15th. This is the YouTube video. And these are my personal notes on it. So I can just send him that or I can show him. And this is super, super powerful because I actually didn't delete this note. It was archived. So I can always go into my archives and actually bring new information out, revive projects or do anything else with it. But that's about it. Resources and archives are super simple. Nothing too complicated. And a final note about the dashboard. We've already covered this once. And all I want to show you right now is that from now on, if you have actually followed the whole system and the whole series so far, all you need to do from now on is to only worry about your daily routine and your weekly reviews. So what happens is that after you've created your daily routine next week, next Sunday, that you actually want to start with this system, you can create the tasks for the week ahead. And then you can create the daily routines as I covered in the video before uh, for the week ahead. And then your daily routines will actually show up right here and then. So on a regular basis, don't worry about anything else but your daily routine. This is the amazing part of this. So you can always open it. Let's say it's a personal day plan. These should have been created beforehand. And as you can see, your habits are already brought in for you. All the plan for you is already brought in. If you have any specific tasks, it's already brought in for you. And then you can, at the end of the day, write your highlight, do your daily rating and connect your related habits or reviews and so on and so forth to it. And that's the whole beauty of this system is that you only need to use it every single day when you need it and only use it once a week to maintain it to distill your things that you've captured and so on and so forth i think you definitely get the picture and if you don't please comment below so i can help you guys set this up for yourself i believe that something like this system out there does not exist at this point in time because of the low overhead and the great return on your attention so you can spend a little time and get a lot and a lot out of the system by the way somewhere down the line i will definitely cover all the benefits and all the things that this system has made me achieve and the amazing side effects of actually taking all this information out of your brain and putting it in a system that you can pretty much access anywhere at any point in time with this high level of organization so that's it i really really hope that you guys enjoyed this video my channel is going to be covering a lot more about self-development a lot more about productivity and not just productivity hacks i really want to go into the fundamentals of actually overcoming procrastination getting more consistent and becoming a better version of yourself. I hope that's something that you guys are interested in. If you are, then click on the subscribe button below, please. And also turn the bell notification on so that you can know when my next videos are actually going to go live. And if you really took value out of this, then you can also share it with your friends so they can also start and actually implement it for themselves. That's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.